Is commercial real estate a better investment than stocks and bonds? We all know that leaving cash in the bank is not a wise move. So when it comes to investing, where should you park your cash right now? Bob Follis joins the show today. Gosh, as everyone knows, this is a very tough time to really be the soothsayer of what's going to happen in the future. There, every person you ask has a different opinion. With the pandemic and uh, with the economic uncertainty, with the rising debt, with all the economic issues we have, we really wonder what's the best direction. What we often do, we try to go back and look in history. And I know many of you go back and look at the history during the big bubble that broke during the internet, and particularly the housing mortgage crisis of 2008, 2009. And really, you need to go back a little further than that, I think, to really capture what's going on in these economic times. You need to go back to 1944, um, during the Bretton Woods um, Agreement, which is really optimally known as the 1944 Agreement. 44 countries came together, and they formed the World Global Monetary System to really restabilize the world after the great devastation we had after World War II. We're having that same devastation right now with the uh, pandemic that's going on. Um, in that reset they had back in 1944, they took the world from the gold standard off into the American dollar standard. And that really changed things for the U.S., obviously. Why did they choose the U.S.? Because we had the largest supply of gold in the United States. We had, in the world, we had three quarters of the gold supply, and we could actually support all the different currencies. But in 1971, Richard Nixon pulled us off the gold standard because of our great stagnation of inflation and uh, recession all occurring at once. And as a result of that, we then had real fiat currency and we could just produce money as required. We're doing that today. We're printing out money by the droves, trying to solve this economic crisis and putting out that money. But what is that going to do to the marketplace? What's that going to do to the whole global monetary system? It's something that we need to worry about and can really affect how our real estate is going to be handled in the commercial market. It's an asset class, just like stocks, just like uh, gold, just like cryptocurrency. And it's an interesting time because our money is so devalued, we're seeing in finance, that many world uh, nations are coming in, they're buying our stocks, our stock market is exploding, and we're starting to see a decoupling of the dollar from the actual um, uh, stock market. So, great history lesson, appreciate that. My question is, where do I park my cash? Well, to have to park cash, you have to have the cash. So a lot of times right now, people are not as liquid as you would think, especially in that commercial market with people defaulting on their rents, not knowing when the government's going to actually back them back up. So a guy like Warren Buffett, he's not afraid. He's highly invested in the stock market, tech, all that money's in there, and he's heavy on cash. Who could do both? Who could keep their money in the stock market, tax? going crazy right now. He's taking advantage of that. Then right now he's heavy cash, like more cash than I think he's ever had in his life. He's ready to spend on maybe commercial when it takes a hit. So my prediction is, I'm sure Bob feels the same way, commercial is gonna take some type of a hit in the near future, Andrew. So you're saying raise cash now? Raise cash now and put it somewhere safe. I don't know if I put it in the tech market. If you have that kind of weather, you can weather both storms at the same time. If the market goes down and you don't need that cash to go back in when something's low, it's a little bit of a teeter-totter going on right now. You know, Steve, because of the, of the diversification out there that is required under this economy, I think it's important that you take a look at all the various asset class. Take a look at cryptocurrency, which I'm going into right now. Put a, no more than 10% maybe into that. Look at going into real estate. Be selective in that. Again, it's an asset which you want to selectively you know, look into. You don't want to get a uh, retail space right now. You don't want to necessarily go into restaurant. You, those are not great investments. Multifamily is safer. You also want to take a look at gold, putting your some money in gold. But you don't want to keep it into cash under your pillow. Um, again, that's a situation where that cash is slowly shrinking. And next thing you know, you're sleeping on a pill because your pillow is all empty from its cash and its value. Yeah, tech looks like it's forming some form of a top. We don't know if it's going to keep escalating, but bottom line, you look at the price to earnings ratios, they're astronomical. And yes, there is great case studies for these amazing tech stocks that are printing cash, but there's also thousands of tech stocks that are not printing cash or actually still losing money, yet they're trading at these crazy multiples. Andy, what are your thoughts? Well, we brought up a lot of points here. Uh, you know, certainly that history lesson by Bob was awesome. You know, we switched from the gold standard to a fiat system, which is not tied to anything. And so as you keep printing money, you know, how high can you go before it starts to topple? And I don't know any fiat system that has survived. And so I think you have to kind of keep that in mind when you're out there looking at where do I park my cash? Do I stay liquid? Do I keep it invested in longer term things like multifamily? Uh, are there residual 
uh, income that I can create? Can I create recession-proof situations for myself? How do I protect myself? These are the questions you have to ask yourself. And right now, there are certainly opportunities coming down the pipeline in the commercial real estate space. They may not be foreclosing yet, but you better believe that there were many landlords unable to pay their mortgages because of situations like COVID-19. Bob, other thoughts? Where are we headed here? Well, this is a great opportunity that's out there because just like it is in the stock market where you want to look for the certain stock that's just the gem that's sitting there that won't be affected as much by the economy, you want to do the same thing in commercial real estate. Um, I've got a hotel group that's converting uh, um, office buildings into multifamily. Um, it's taking a place that maybe was a retail mall and turning it into a warehouse. It's knowing how to selectively choose your actual property and then how can I change and reposition that into something that's more desirable, something that's more, um, re has more uh, build up against the uh, coronavirus outbreak that might happen next year or the year following, not to be a doomsdayer, but you got to be prepared for these sudden changes. And we're really looking at how we do businesses. We got to look at doing things more online. We got to look at way of new ways of engaging customers. And that all relates into how you design your real estate to interact with the, uh, with the consumer. Steve, as far as businesses, I know it's a specialty you focus on. Sometimes the investment into commercial real estate comes along with purchasing or owning a business. What's your two cents finger on the pulse? Is now the time to buy into a business? The right businesses are still selling like crazy. Man, that interest rate still applies to the commercial loans. They're not the 30-year fixed loan that you would get, but they're good loans, and they're usually 10 years, not five now, which makes it more attractive. You can have some legs in that 10 years with a loan on a commercial space that's already positive cash flowing during these hard times. That's a good deal. It's hard to positive cash flow during these hard times. You're finding deals like that. They're definitely worthy of it. Again, repurposing. Wow, how do we repurpose this space? Is it something that we're gonna do effectively with money or is it gonna be something we're gonna do from the ground up? We're talking about maybe repurposing land. The land contracts that are going out right now, being signed and permits being pulled, stuff they're not even gonna build for four or five years. So I think there's opportunity coming down the line here that we're, and they're gonna to build towards whatever the financial situation is at that time. So a lot of this stuff is just hitting the ground. It's gonna be a long leg thing. And then right when they figure it out, they're gonna start the groundbreak. 